Good afternoon, YouTube. Welcome to Ferret Face Fail Productions. So today we're going to be doing a little update on our 2022 Riehu MR Pro. So I think a lot of people have kind of been interested in, in this bike simply because of its price point and the uniqueness of the Spanish Enduro, which has been kind of passed around a little bit. So I'll do a little recap here. Um, basically, the Riehu is the old platform that the Gas Gas used to be on before KTM bought them. I've got a few other videos talking about this in great detail, so if you want to go back and uh, check out some of my other Riehu reviews, uh, be sure to, because there's a, a lot of good history that comes into this bike, and it's part of the reason why I like them quite a bit. Today we're riding out here in Colorado at Captain Jack's Trail System. We're doing uh, Vanessa's Lollipop Loop here. So uh, it's about a 21 mile loop uh, encompassing uh, going up 667 to 771 and then going to pipeline. So um, really great loop out there, um, a lot of fun. It's a challenging section of single track, especially with some snow and ice on it. So I hope you guys enjoy this. So our Riehu MR Pro has about just shy of a thousand miles, I believe on it now. So I think she's uh, a right around 790 going into 800 miles. So she's getting up there. I would imagine hour wise, she's probably uh, well over a hundred hours at the very least. She's had no top end changes, no spark plug changes, no nothing. Really no major maintenance has been done. Um, last time I pulled the plug, I was considering it and it looked fine, wiped it off, put it back in. So um, yeah, I mean, this bike is, uh, it's been on rentals. This is one of our rental bikes here at a and Moto Toys. I've been riding it quite a bit this year. Uh, I really enjoy it, so we've had no problems with it. With that, I'll just segue right into um, reliability. Um, as I already kind of said it. We've had no issues with the Riehu whatsoever. Um, it, it's been a phenomenal bike. Everybody likes to talk about the starting system on these bikes. It's not reliable. Well, for 2022, all the models that came to the United States all had the updated uh, starting system lubricated Bendix, all that fun stuff. So, and since we have not had any issues, it's been cranked on and she's been running very hot single track, um, stalled many, many times, cranked it, started cold on the starter. So yeah, I've honestly been quite impressed. It's lasted longer than some beta starters I know at this point. So um, yeah, I mean, reliability is always an important factor for anybody who rides a dirt bike. And, and for me, being able to single track it, ride the various different trails that we do, uh, be able to rent it out and have renters beat on it and stay very good and reliable, then yeah, I mean, it is what it is. I think these bikes are very capable, reliable bikes. My ongoing impression of this bike. So we've had this for a little while. We had the 22 before, well, I think it was still 2021 when I bought it. Um, yeah, so the MR Pro overall is, is a phenomenal package for the money. Uh, I, I still believe that they're 10.5 for the top end MR Pro, um, and that is a really good price given how expensive all dirt bikes are. Um, I've said this before, I think I would personally prefer the MR Racing more so than the MR Pro. The MR Pro suspension from KYB is very stiff, very set up for somebody who's going to enduro type race this. It's not really something I do. In fact, I've got the suspension backed up, I think, about as far as it'll go on most of the settings to soften it up um, on longer days. It's just kind of brutal. So that's my only real qualm, personal preference. If you're really looking for a tricked out, beefed out suspension, X-Trig, triple clamps, and all that stuff, the MR Pro is a phenomenal deal. The engine is very strong on the bike. Um, it is definitely a different power delivery than, say, a Beta 300. I think the Beta 300 just naturally comes a little bit more torquier towards the bottom end. Um, that said, um, I think in the low powered map and running a little bit richer uh, pilot and richer just jetting setup of, as a whole and then backing off the power valve on the Riehu, you really get a very strong hit down low. I've also heard great things about going to uh, different heads for getting a little bit more torque. But overall, the power is very comparable. I mean, this is a gas gas engine that really truthfully has been unmodified since the 90s. So um, for what it is, it doesn't vibrate very much. A lot of people complain because it's not counterbalanced. Does it vibrate a little bit more than the Beta? Maybe. Uh, I don't really notice it. It's a two-stroke, so you should be riding and not really thinking about it. Um, and otherwise, the power is very strong. Uh, I think when you get on it, especially when you're in more open type scenarios, it's, you know, I've got no complaints about the engine specifically. 
um, chassis, electronics, all that stuff uh, is all held up very well. So, of course, we had put on a whole bunch of P-Tech protection stuff. We sell P-Tech, and we really wanted to kind of go all out with showcasing the things that they make for these bikes. So we have like a P-Tech side case uh, or clutch cover. Uh, we've got the front disc guard cover, rear disc guard, uh, the P-Tech radiator braces, radiator guards, whatever we're going to call them. We've got the full pipe protector, linkage protection, skid plate. Um, so we got pretty much everything on it. We've protected it quite well. Nothing's really been hit on it. So, um, yeah, overall, I would say that the the chassis, there's been no problems with welds or rust or corrosion. We live in Colorado, so that's pretty uncommon anyway. Um, any of the electrical systems, no problems. In fact, we wired in the LED kit that comes from Rehu. Uh, one of our viewers was kind enough to give us a really sweet deal on that and uh, wired it up to where it's either on or off. So... Uh, I like to be able to turn the light off because on two strokes, that really helps with uh, charging the battery. Um, but, you know, hey, I, I, overall, we've had no issues. I've had less electrical problems and, and issues with the Riehu than I did my own Beta. So from what I understand, um, the Riehu MR Pro and MR Series has received a few changes, but not really a whole lot for the 2024 model year. I believe they get rid of the... Um, uh, thermostat on there on the engine and then so it's just straight pipe like it probably should have been to begin with and they got rid of the complicated turn signal thingy on the handlebars um, and overall I think it said oh yeah they added a few extra teeth to the rear sprocket which was absolutely necessary I think that bike came so tall that was one of my biggest gripes about it when I got it but overall, they made some decent updates, but not a whole lot of changes. So this is a very good review. If you're looking at buying a 2024 Riehu, uh, could be an MR Racing, MR Pro, whatever. Um, you know, is it a worthwhile investment for your money? Absolutely. I think the aftermarket is, is there for these engines. CPD Direct has been very good to work with us on any sort of parts we've needed. Um, the platform has been very reliable. We've had, it's been rented. I've had guys that have been on two strokes before, and you know, God knows what renters do to my bike. Uh, all I know is that it is held up. Um, it also looks unique in a very stagnant world of KTMs. <laughs> I don't care if it's a Husqvarna, it's labeled as a KTM, or if it's now labeled as a gas gas. It's all the same bike. It really is. They all look the same. They all kind of run the same. They all feel the same. That's pretty boring in my opinion. So. Um, as far as a unique bike goes that has decent support, has good aftermarket support, you can find replacement parts for them. Yeah, I mean, I would say go for it. And if you can find one used, that's even better because I'm sure you'll get a, a good deal on it. So um, that's kind of my take on the Riehu in uh, 2023 going into 2024. Uh, and, and overall, if we're talking about dirt bikes that are comparable to the Riehu in that price range, well, what do we really have left that's ten thousand dollars? Let's face it, most dealers are gonna they're gonna sell you that bike for ten grand. So, oh, nice. um, what other bikes do we have that are MSRP ten thousand dollars that are a high end two stroke with a you know fully tricked out valved out um, KYB suspension? There's really not a whole lot. Um, you know, I was just thinking about it in my head. <laughs> you, you can't get a beta for that anymore. Um, not unless it's like a leftover. Um, you really can't get a KTM or a Husky or any of those um, for that kind of money. So, um, and you know, it's still carbureted engine. It's it's non counterbalanced. Some people hate that. I just think if we're if we're having a conversation about a really good bike that is a, a very good um, value for your money, the Ray is there, and I really enjoy riding it. I've got a Beta X trainer back there. We've got other bikes that I can ride. And I picked the Riehu because I really enjoy how it looks. I enjoy how it runs. Um, I like the map switch is very functional for me, um, riding it in, in various different s situations. The only time that I really struggled on the Riehu was um, we were out in uh, Montrose, Colorado, doing the Adobes, and we'd put a Sedona kind of oh, yes. real hard tire compound oh, yes. on there. It was just not good. Um, struggled everywhere I went with that whole trip, I swear to God. Never going to buy that tire again. Does not work in this kind of terrain here. Um, but I better get a good long life out of it. In fact, if you were interested in a Sedona, let me know. I've still got it sitting back there. It's practically new. Oh God. At the end of the day, the Riehu is a great bike. Um, you know, I'm not biased towards anything. People always try to 
you know, oh, you own it, so you must be a show. Look, I, you know, we own a shop out here in Monument, Colorado. I do rentals. You know, it's got to be a good, reliable bike. Otherwise, it costs me money. Um, can cost me a lot of money. Can cost me a customer. Rentals is such a volatile thing. And um, it's been a great bike. So um, whether it's the Riehu or something else, you know, don't get me wrong. I love our betas. I love our other bikes. Um, I'll get out on anything. But if I were to go out and spend between eight and nine thousand dollars on a bike right now, that's a two-stroke, four single track. I would go buy an MR Racing probably tomorrow. Um, I'd like to add more to my fleet. These are sweet bikes. So the only other competition I think that's in this space that is very comparable to the the Riehu. Um, is probably the GPX Moto, their 300 two-stroke, whether it's the linkage or non-linkage. That would be a really good comparison to do. And maybe we can think about doing that someday. So let me know in the comments below what uh, what you think of the Riehu. Have you ever looked at them? Did you get to ride an old gas gas, a real gas gas like this one? And what did you think? I, I feel uh, like it's an interesting question to ask in a, in a pretty pretty kind of lame market these days. But, yeah, anyways, thanks for watching, guys. We'll catch you all in the next one. Ferret Face out.